Hello, ex-communists. I am Splice, and this is Splice Strategies. But you probably already knew that, because we're kind of six episodes in. Plus, I also labeled the video. Obvious things aside, we're trying to figure out why this operation is called Operation Barrel Cake. The only idea that we've come up with is that the barrel is a reference to the fact that we shot down this UFO, like shooting fish in a barrel, <coughs> and cake is a reference to the fact that we're going to get some sweet technology on the inside of this UFO. Thus, barrel cake. Now before we start going into deep analysis of what's going on here, I want to just preface something in this video. At one point in the video, I'm going to make a horrible mistake. What is that mistake, you ask? Just watch the rest of the video, you impatient person, you. As we've covered before, these UFO crash landing missions are typified by the fact that there is a lot of open space populated by populated wow populated by heavy cover elsewhere. Why didn't I go back and just say it correctly? I'm too lazy, that's why. But that was not the mistake I was talking about. No, no siree, the mistake that I will be making will be grave indeed. Not simple mispronunciations. So, let's get started, shall we? As you saw by that golden strand there, we know where some meld is. Nothing special, we just orient ourselves in that direction and get moving. We hear some alien chatter on the other direction, but, uh, you know, we figure if we keep moving this way, we don't have to deal with them. Rather, I should say that we won't have to deal with them yet. In either case, the logic holds out, and Citrus Architect gathers the meld. After that, we simply reorient ourselves and start trudging through this swamp to get to the other meld. As we do so, we're completely aware that we're moving towards the UFO, which means we're heading towards a more likely confrontation. And sure enough, it's not too long till Evil Emison discovers two sectoids who look like they're just trying to capture a few frogs in the middle of the swamp. They thought it wouldn't be a big deal. They thought it was just, you know, a little innocent fun. But they forgot that these are Earth frogs, and we are the defenders of Earth. Plus, on top of it, if we did that, then suddenly, you know, they'd be mutating them, and then we'd have half-alien frogs to deal with. They'd probably look like Lickitung or something. And... And the more I think about it now, that actually would make more sense than most Pokemon origin stories. Either way, we take advantage of Citrus Architect's run and gun and put two bullets in this flanked alien's chest. The next alien then makes what I thought was a tactical error. Instead of moving and then going into Overwatch, he instead moves twice, which means we can advance on him. But where he moved to is causing some problems. I move Citrus Architect up, but he has no better than a coin flip's chance of getting a hit off the alien. I move Evil Emison up, but she's using a shotgun. In order to get her into reliable range, we'd have to run and gun, be close range, but that would likely activate the Outsider. So instead we just leave her in Overwatch by this tree. There's nowhere that Jimmy can move where she can have cover and shoot the next turn, so we simply leave her where she is and put her in Overwatch. Gemini Spark is too far away to get a shot off, so we simply move him up and then put him into Overwatch. And then we move Citrus Architect where he can't get flanked by the alien moving slightly. We then pray that the alien chooses to rush us instead of running away from us into the safety of the UFO. Unfortunately, he doesn't cooperate with those hopes. Luckily for us, Evil Lemison is a skeet shooting champion. Look at that, shooting shotguns from that great a distance. She's come such a long way from, you know, team killing Maddie. With the two frog catchers dead, it's time to move on. The way these UFO crash missions tend to happen, especially early on, is that you'll have two groups of two or three sectoids, and then you'll have the outsider inside the UFO. Now, it'd be a real quick trip for us to just pop into the UFO and fight the outsider right now, but with another gaggle of sectoids somewhere out there, I'd much rather fight them first than the outsider, rather than fight the outsider and then have them stumble upon us during the fight. My assumption is, after having been pretty much all over this side of the UFO, that they're on the other side. So I start carefully trying to maneuver my soldiers around the UFO without triggering the outsider. Only, it turns out my assumptions are horribly wrong. These sectoids have come in and attacked in a very unfortunate place for us. Traditionally, you try and have your other soldiers between your snipers and the aliens. This is the opposite of that situation. These two aliens must be feeling pretty good about themselves. They've executed the flank perfectly, they've got our long distance fighter in a close range situation, and they're already planning how they're gonna tell the story of their great flank to all the cool hip alien chicks at the space bar. No, not, not that space bar. Yes, that one. 
Unfortunately for these two, Jimmy has a grenade, so the only space that matters is the space between them, and the fact there isn't enough of it. With Jimmy sending those two aliens to the big cantina in the sky, it's time to focus on the outsider. The goal for this engagement is simple. I either want Jimmy or Gemini Spark to get the kill, and likely a promotion. So we put Jimmy on the high ground so she has the best chance of shooting a moving target, and we carefully move the rest of the team to the sparkly particle effect that the aliens call a door in preparation for assaulting the Outsider. So Citrus Architect gives a little knock on the door, the Outsider scampers away, Jimmy takes a shot, Jimmy misses the shot, and now we got to deal with this guy tucked into a corner so tight you'd think he's playing the world's highest stakes game of hide and go seek ever. Now, we could just simply run and gun Evil Emison and Citrus Architect in there, but they could also crit by doing that and then kill the thing without ever giving Gemini Spark a chance at the alien. So we're just going to use the much more refined approach of using weapons grade explosives to blow the outsider to kingdom come. So we move Citrus Architect and Gemini Spark in. Citrus Architect throws his grenade, careful not to destroy the alien's computer. And Gemini Spark finishes the thing off with a Gemini Kaboom. And so ends Operation Barrel Cake. We got through it without losing any meld, without taking any damage, and without making a single portal reference. Ah, eh, screw it, let's make a portal reference. Here we go! But there's no sense trying shot you just cannot make With enough grenades we defeated Barrel Cake And when the research is done we will make a better gun And shoot aliens that haven't died Oh man, that was cathartic. I can't tell you how long I've been holding cake jokes. Oh, and look, I got the achievement too! Oh, wonderful. So promotions. Unfortunately, Gemini Spark is the only one who gets promoted. I'd really hope that Jimmy would get a promotion as well. But we're happy that he's at least a support and not another assault since we already have two of those. In the resource front, we were able to gain from the UFO a couple of things. Namely, some alien alloys, nav computers, and power sources. Now unfortunately, one of the nav computers and the power source were damaged, but we can at least sell them for cash. More specifically, we're able to sell the damaged components for 50 double S's. Such a reliable currency. Next on our to-do list is to customize Gemini. First, we give him his designation, freshly earned, 09. For those of you who don't know him, he, like Evil Emison, is a vigorous Pikachu player. But Evil Emison's already got the goggles, so we're gonna have to give him the headband, and he will look silly. After I'm done once again playing dress up, it's time to go to the scanner. And we immediately get DJ Sucre back, and our research on weapons fragments completes. This means we can now build a scope, which will be critical for our snipers to improve their accuracy. Next comes the decision on what to research next. And for me, it's an easy decision. I want to get to mech soldiers as quickly as possible. That means we're going to need to research us some meld recombination. After that, it's back to the scanner. And here's where we see my critical mistake. Did you catch it? It was really subtle, so it might be hard for you to see, especially if you've never played XCOM before. There it is, right there. For those of you not in the full XCOM loop, what you need to know is that there is a thing called satellites. The satellite mechanic in the game allows for a couple of things. First, the country that has a satellite over it gives you more money. They also give you an engineer or a scientist, depending upon the country. Secondly, it reduces panic in that country. At the end of each month, the council gives us a report. You know, that group led by Lex Luthor. If a country is a full five bars of panic and it comes to the end of the month, they're most likely leaving the XCOM project, taking their funding and their resources with them. Without satellites, you're completely dependent upon your missions to reduce panic in countries. Satellites give you nearly the only flexibility you have in dealing with worldwide panic. Why am I mentioning this? Because satellites take 20 days to build. You'll notice the date on the little timer says the 12th, and so unless March has magically developed a 32nd day, I have utterly shot myself in the foot. Bum, bum, bum. After my critical error, I spend a lot of time in the bargaining stage of grief. I keep hoping that if I stare at the screen long enough, I can make 20 days of construction fit into 19.75 days left in the month. But, alas, 
Mathematics is a cruel mistress. More importantly though, I actually have to do something. I stared at the screen long enough that Beetober returned for, to active duty from his injury. Ooh, kinda wasted a lot of time there. But Lex Luthor's got just the thing to get me back into the swing of things. A council mission i.e. Legion of Doom mission. Regardless, what we need to do is we need to get some dude from an observatory and save him for scanning stuff. I don't know. But hey, we're gonna get some money and LexCorp's gonna send us a few scientists. We need a few LexCorp scientists to spruce up this place. So, it's time to go on the mission. With 01 DJ Sucre and 03 Beetober back in business, we're gonna let Citrus Architect and Gemini Spark take a rest and we're going to get together the original gang that we had to start this all off. That's right, we're getting the band back together, yeah! With the A-Team now fully in place, I'm free to completely forget that I can make a scope for Jimmy and just send them on the mission. Sweet. So, at least I didn't forget the medkit this time. Scope or no scope, please. Tune in next week as we face down an aggressive onslaught of abhorrent undead, endeavoring to end our African Observatory's elucidating examinations of our alien enemy in Operation Morbid Vampire. Until then, I'm Splice, and please sign my petition to get a 30-second day added to the March calendar. <laughs>